I want to thank you all for, um, for coming today. This is, I think, a really, a really special event. Um, I want to, we, but we want to, uh, thank you, but we want to open, <laughs> this is stupid, but, <laughs> but, but we want to open this with, I think, with, which is, with a really special video, which is ver a very short clip. Go. My mom has been a dancer ever since she was three years old. Now, at age 87, she still loves to dance and perform. She takes tap dancing lessons. And when she's up on the stage performing, her true self really shines through. So my mom often communicates without words, and this can happen anywhere when we're in town and she's going to the grocery store or at a restaurant or a bank. And it can be really challenging. She gets frustrated. but. When people take some time and give her an opportunity, by the end of the conversation, they get an idea of what she's trying to express. My mom has dementia, and dementia is a term we use for trouble with thinking that is not a part of normal aging. And you may know people, friends, or neighbors who have trouble with memory loss, or they can't figure out how to plan during their daily lives how to get things done. Dementia is not a part of normal aging, and anyone can get dementia. Dementia can be one of the most challenging financial and emotional aspects of later life that families face, but there's still a lot of life left to live. With my mom, I find we still have a chance to laugh and have fun. Just a couple of weeks ago, we were at an event in our town and we saw people she knew, she enjoyed meeting new people, and we just had a whole lot of fun together. Right now, there's a terrific national movement called Dementia Friendly America, and throughout our state, cities and towns are coming together around this grassroots effort to make sure that our neighborhoods and communities are safe, inclusive, and respectful for people People with dementia and their caregivers. We can even play an important role just by recognizing the signs of dementia and offering understanding and compassion for people living with dementia in our communities. So you've seen me as a daughter and a caregiver and you've heard my stories about my family, my mom, and I'll bet a lot of you have stories that you could share as well. I'm also Alice Bonner and I'm the secretary of the Massachusetts Executive Office of Elder Affairs. And I'm here today to encourage you to learn more about dementia-friendly Massachusetts. Please go to dfmassachusetts.org. I just saw that about three days ago, because it just came out. It captures it totally. Alice Bonner lives next door in Westboro, right? She's the Secretary of Elder Affairs, but that's not why she's interested in this issue, right? It's because she's dealing with it. So um, to start off, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Arthur Bergeron. Uh, I'm an attorney here in town. So my mother died in a nursing home uh, in, in 1991, and uh, she had been slowly deteriorating with dementia symptoms for the previous two years, and so I went through all that, and I get it. And my oldest brother, who lives in Maine, got an di uh, early stage diagnosis a couple years ago. He's now 79. I'm 67, so I figure I've got about six, 10 years left. I've got about 10 years left before I can get this right, so that I can be living, staying in my hometown, and I'm still going to be welcome here, and I'm still going to be proud to be here. So I'm, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, dementia friendly. I think Alice really summarized kind of the goals of the broader movement. Um, and Trish Pope's going to talk a little bit about what we did last year that got us to this meeting. But I just want to tell you a few things about my friends Frank and Mary. For those of you who have been uh, <laughs> seeing some of my presentations, these are the people that I always use as my models. Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And I always tell them, so that's their goal. They want to live in their house until they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. It's very simple. So the question is, how can Frank and Mary do that um, if one of them gets dementia? Now, there are a lot of things they can do to equip their home to do that, but the question is, what, is, when, what's, what, what, if they, what when they step out the door? What happens then? What happens in their own neighborhood? Are there people in their neighborhood that are not just shying away from them because, oh my God, you know, I don't know what to say to Mary anymore, she's got dementia, or, or are just afraid to talk to them, right? Or, or can they still feel safe around the neighborhood? 
And, and if they go to Wellies, you know, or if they go to Kennedy's, um, can they still feel safe? Can they be living their lives? So it, it, I'm going to do one, I'm going to do my Kennedy story. So if Trish Pope one day was at Kennedy's. Kennedy's, um, um, George, for you outlanders, the Kennedy's is the plate, is like Arturo's, right? George Barrett is here. Um, he's on the Board of Selectmen in Westboro, and they're the community that is starting this process right now. They're trying to learn from us, and that's why George came over. So when it, Trish, is, Trish is at Kennedy's sitting at the bar, now this is not an unusual place for Trish Pope, for, 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 for many of you who know her. So she, she, and her, she and her husband are sitting at the bar, and a couple comes in, and uh, as an older guy who, who, with his wife, and it's clear that she's got some problems, that she's got some cognitive problems. And, 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 uh, and uh, the waitress comes over to us and says, so can I get you your usual? Yeah, I can get you your usual. So they pours her two drinks, right? And brings the drinks over to the, to the couple. And the couple's drinking. And Trish is like, well, that's strange. This woman has got some issues. Doesn't this, this bartender get that, you know? And, and after, you know, three or four minutes, or not, say, three or four, five or 10 minutes, the waitress comes back over. Oh, can I, you know, can I refill your drink? Oh, yeah, sure, you know? And now Trish is getting irritated. Like, wow, this woman's really taking advantage of this lady, right? So she pulls the, the lady over to the side of the bar, says, don't you realize that lady has got dementia? And, and, the, and the bartender says, well, of course. You know, we, everybody knows that. They've been coming here for years. She says, that's just ginger ale in the glass, <laughs> right? That's a dementia-friendly community. That's a dementia-friendly community. So, it's about restaurants. There are actually places like this um, in other parts of the country. One of the places that we learned about, um, we were in Minnesota learning about th their initiative, um, was a restaurant that actually does that one, one day a week. Um, they have a time, I think it's two to four in, on Saturday afternoons, and they, and, they, and they invite folks who've got dementia and their caregivers, and they just have a good time, you know? And it's, a, it's great for kind of everybody who's there. Um, the restaurant does okay. And I, I mentioned Wellies and Kennedy specifically because both of them have expressed an interest in doing that here. I think a part, that kind of arose out of some of the things that we've been working on here. So a, in a dementia-friendly community, whether you're going to the grocery store, you know, somebody's going to be there to help you out. You get a little confused in the aisles. So they're not going to just say, go to aisle 15. Maybe they're going to walk over with you. Or at the bank, they're going to be looking out for you, helping you do your change, helping you with your receipt. Being suspicious when you show up with somebody that they've never seen before who all of a sudden is going on to your bank accounts. That's a dementia-friendly community. Um, if you're going to the hairdressers, if you're going to the barbers, people understand that you've got some memory issues and they're willing to help you out. Th this is not about curing Alzheimer's, which may happen, but not in my lifetime. It's about helping people live with it and accepting that it's a disease that's got symptoms and that you can deal with those symptoms and so that you feel safe with the police. I know one of the initiatives we're going to be talking about a little bit later on that's coming out of this is an initiative by the police department. So that, and, and Trisha's going to talk about that, I think, because the, our officer who is leading that is also doing the Special Olympics polar plunge today and so he not, may not be here. But we're going to, we're going to, <laughs> we're going to <laughs> tough day for a polar plunge, <laughs> tough. Um, or if you're the fire department, or if you're the EMT, if, if you're the EMT showing up at somebody's house and you know, maybe because there's a dementia registry in the town, you know who the folks are that have dementia, you're, not, you're going to be able to understand how to deal with them. Or if you're at a police stop, you know, you're, 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 you're going to understand that this person isn't, isn't addicted to something or isn't drunk, you know, he's just, he's got some, some dementia problems. Um, and then if you're at the senior center, and at the senior center, I think in a dementia-friendly community, kind of becomes the center of, not I want to say the center of the world, but it's the center of education. It's the place that you can come to learn about the issues that maybe you or your family members are facing, and a place that you can come to be safe, right here. And the director of the senior center is the person who, along with the senior center directors from Northboro and Hudson, went with me to Minnesota to learn about their program um, about a year and a half ago, not long ago, like September of, of last, of 2015. And this is where this has come from. And by the way, Alice Bonner and a lot of the state program um, has, has been modeling themselves on what we're doing here. So this is really kind of a lead program. So the purpose of today is to help you understand what we have done. And could I just ask the people who were on the action team that worked in this process during the year to stand up for a second? Just for a second. Come on, you got to be caught, you know, you got to be brave here. You got to be brave. 
right? Thank you. And so we want, we want you to see what, we, what the results were of the outreach we did to the community to try to understand this issue and kind of where to go from here. Then we got several folks who are gonna be talking about the pieces of the plan that we're hoping to implement this year. Um, uh, and then we want, because we want you to know about that, and then we want your input re or questions regarding any of those programs and then any of your suggestions regarding what else we should be doing. Because we understand this is a multi-year thing, right? I got 10 years, I got, I'm okay with a 10-year plan, right? We're gonna do a little bit of this every year until we are you know, as dementia friendly as we can be. Thank you. Trish, now, Trish Pope, everybody, Trish Pope, our Senior Center Director, former president of our lovely city council. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for coming this morning. Um, on a five degree day, you can tell how important it is to the community just by the amount of people in this room. Before I tell you a little bit about what happened uh, out in Minnesota, I do want to recognize that we do have City Councilor Don Landis with us here today. We have our veterans agent, Nick Charbonneau, and we have our state representative, Danielle Gregoire, along with Selectman, um, I forgot your name. George Barrett. Along with Selectman uh, Barrett from Westboro. We're all getting it, Trish. <laughs> so it just shows you it just shows you how very important it is um, to all of the communities to have people out um, on a morning like this. So we really do appreciate it. So how did we get here? Well, um, there was a grant written through Baypath Elder Services. It was actually written by Baypath Elder Services. Um, and it was for Marlborough, Northborough, and Hudson to learn how to become dementia friendly because it's a movement that's coming across the nation. Okay. Um, the reason these three communities were picked, well, first of all, there's a fantastic grant writer over at Baypath, um, and that happens to be the executive director, Christine Alessandro, who really should get a lot of credit for, for starting this movement with us. Um, Northborough, Marlboro, and Hudson were picked because we're contiguous, but we're very different. Marlboro is a, very, is a, is a small city, Northborough is considered a little bit upscale, and Hudson a little bit more rural. So even though our mission statement started out the same, we had expected that our um, process in the end would be very different. Much to our surprise, people want the same thing. We were really, um, we, we st stuck with the same mission statement. We went on our path to do the surveys in the communities. And we found out what people want is education. Not only for themselves, but for their hairdresser, for their banker, for the people in the restaurant, just like Kennedy, so everybody can be comfortable in their own community. We went out to Minnesota. We um, worked with the people that started ACT on Alzheimer's. We brought their program back here, but modified it a little bit to fit our communities. Um, dementia, we got the toolkit um, from Minnesota, and all of their documents, I will say, out there, they're very gracious. Everything is online. You're welcome to it. You can take, it, you can take what you want and leave what you don't want. So we learned a tremendous amount when we went out there. Um, it was two and a half days jam-packed of meetings and interviews. We didn't, unfortunately, have time um, to get out to some of the communities because of the distance. We did get to Mall of America, though, so don't worry about that. <laughs> so we brought this program back here, um, set up our action teams. Each action team was a little bit different here in Marlboro um, because I knew a lot of people. I was able to reach out to people personally and invite them to participate with us. Um, and then people read it in the newspaper and just started coming forward. So it's been an amazing journey for us. Um, we're extremely pleased with everything that's been going on. Um, our community is not unlike any other community. We're getting older. Um, actually, in 2018, we will have more citizens over 60 than under 18. Um, like Arthur said, the Senior Center is, is an integral part of that. I like to term the Senior Center as the Boys and Girls Club for anybody over 60. So you can come here and you can recreate, you can be educated, you can hang out. There's all different kinds of things, so we all need to be educated in what's happening with our community. Um, our survey results, our survey takers, we, we surveyed about 117 people across the community. Something we did learn is you don't need quite an expansive survey like that because some of our results got a little bit skewed. We weren't able to survey enough people in certain sectors. So as communities move forward, our recommendation will be that they cut down those sectors just a little bit. What we did learn, though, was um, we learned that we, 
We need all different kinds of things. We were able at the very end of our journey last year to get a small grant. Um, each community got a grant of $3,000, which we had about six weeks or so to spend or we were gonna lose it. Every community chose to do something different. Our community chose um, from the action team, we decided that a website was very important. To get a website up and running in six weeks is no easy task. Fortunately for us, Dan McQuaid was available. Um, he's a webmaster, unbelievable. And he came forward to help us with this. Um, so our $3,000, I feel, is going a very, very long way because we have a fantastic website that Dan's going to walk through a little bit for you. It's got all kinds of resources. It is a work in progress. If you see something that is not on that website that you think should be there, let us know because we, there's all kinds of information out there. We can add anything. If you ask a question on the website, there is a small team of people that have volunteered that within 48 hours you'll get an answer, whether it's we need to find more information for you, for you or give you the information you're looking for, but we have a team of people willing to do that. So it's very interactive, it's very interesting, and I'm gonna give it to Dan to explain a little bit. All right, thank you, Trish, and good morning, everybody. As you can see, the um, web address is quite long, so it'd be kind of take you a little bit of time to type in uh, all the entire uh, web address. So the thing to do is to uh, Google it or Yahoo it or Bing it uh, with Dementia Friendly Marlboro. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see our website right here. It's either uh, .org or .com. And here's our website. And at the top of the page, you'll see the different links which light up for the different pages. Um, most of what Trish and um, Arthur talked about here is on the first page on how we uh, became to be. Um, there's a link here, which Trish will be talking about a little bit for the City of Marlboro Police Department Cognitive uh, Alert Form, which is a two-page document. And there's a map here which was supplied by the Act on Alzheimer's uh, Developed Tools and Resources to give you a good idea on what a dementia-friendly community should look like. And as Art said, uh, why should we be concerned about Alzheimer's and other dementias? It's because uh, uh, it, it, there's many people that have it and costing the nation uh, quite, quite a bit of money. Um, and then b b below here is um, what does creating a dementia-friendly community involve? Uh, raising awareness, supporting family and friends, and um, uh, including communities that experience inequities. And then we go to the About page. Uh, again, this is more or less what Trish just talked about um, with the surveys and um, the website. So an important uh, page here is the 10 signs of Alzheimer's. We're borrowing this from the uh, Alzheimer's Association. And so this is uh, a list of about 10 signs of Alzheimer's. There is a great uh, page here, which is like a checklist. Have you noticed any of these warning signs? So this is the same text, but this is something that you can print out uh, fill out and bring to your doctor. It's sort of a checklist of things that may be happening in your life or uh, a loved one's life. So that's, that's a two-page document as well, so you can print that out. So we'll quit out of that tab. And then the next one is businesses. So this is what Arthur was talking about, tips for business organizations. Uh, communication tips for all business organizations. Communi communication tips for retail businesses. And how to create a dementia-friendly physical space. So we encourage uh, all business owners and even em employer, employees of businesses and restaurants in the area to download this information, print it out, give it to your employees or your boss, and and have everybody look it over to accommodate uh, people with dementia in your restaurant or retail organization. And the next is the resources page, which has links to other websites. Uh, on the left here we have news article links, uh, articles that Arthur uh, wrote back in uh, a couple years ago in the Metro West Daily News. 
In the center are referral links to all of those other websites we're talking about, Bay Path Elder Services. Um, there's a, a wonderful uh, YouTube video here, a uh, talk that uh, someone had uh, in Marlboro Hotel. Um, there's the Dementia Friendly America link. Uh, the Dementia Friendly Massachusetts initiative uh, for their website. The video that you saw at the beginning of this presentation is right here. You can take a look at it again. Uh, here is the Act on Alzheimer's Minnesota or organization, the national head, uh, headquarters for Alzheimer's, and the Massachusetts and New Hampshire chapters. And then on the right here, we have educational links um, for uh, a talk that J Joshua Friedis did here in this building about non-pharmaceutical non memory care. And there's other articles here for communication strategies for dementia and other uh, YouTube videos from Act on Alzheimer's. So there's plenty of information here you can refer to. And the final page is the contact page, which Trish talked about, um, where you can either call her, and here's her uh, extension number, if you need immediate assistance, or you can fill out this form. Uh, all the fields are optional, so you can give as little or as much information as you'd like. And um, you can hit submit, and it'll go to Trish, who will, uh, if she doesn't answer the question, will forward it to a person that can within 48 hours. And we want to make sure you know that all information will not be shared with any other organization. We're, we'll keep all that information here. And that concludes my presentation. So it's true, I don't look like Officer Wicks. <laughs> Officer Wicks, you know, it's five degrees out and he's over at the Special Olympics headquarters out on Forest Street doing the polar plunge today. Oh. So he couldn't be with us. Um, what this is, is we've developed a registry and nothing is, um, we're sharing all the information with other communities. So we took some, some of the um, questions that they had over in Northborough. We took some of the things that they had in Hudson. We put it together for a registry here. What this registry is, is something very simple and easy. You can click on it, fill out the information, snap a picture on your cell phone, send it off to the police department. If you or your loved one, if somebody has um, some form of dementia, even if they're in early stages, a current picture is very important. We want to stress the fact that this is not, it's going to go to the police station for a registry. This is not, you're going to register your person and the police are going to show up at your front door and make sure a driver's license are taken away and things like that. That is not the case at all. The police want to be our friend. Officer Wicks and Detective Snap have been phenomenal in this movement. Um, our new police chief, um, Georgie, is very excited to be a part of this. We want people to feel safe and feel comfortable in their community, but sometimes, you might get out and be a little bit confused. Head off to the grocery store and end up um, at the mall instead. We want to be able to help you. So if the police are called, they very quickly can identify who you are, perhaps redirect you, or even call your emergency contact to let them know where you are. People um, get confused very easily. It's very easy to get turned around on this highway system. We want people to be safe. We want you to feel comfortable in your own community. So that is the purpose behind this registry. Um, we try to make it very simple. Uh, and again, none of this information is being shared. So if you fill out this on our website, it goes directly to the police department. Nobody is going to see it except those that are entering it into the registry at the police department. So we don't want anybody to be afraid of it. We want this tool to make you feel comfortable. We're very um, proud of Detective um, of Officer Wicks for getting this up and running, and he has really taken a personal interest in this. He has spent a tremendous amount of time getting this up and together. We asked him about maybe six or eight weeks ago if we could do something like this, and he jumped on it immediately. This is something that I hope um, will transpire into every community because it's very important. We have, you know, and we didn't want to, there is a silver alert out there, and um, we didn't want to get into a color medley here of different alerts and things like this. It's just a very simple cognitive alert. You can fill it out. It'll be held at the police department, but your people will be safe, and they'll be returned home without any fanfare. Can I just add one, one thing to that? Just because I was thinking of one of Officer Wicks's. Thing. Yes. What, what, one of the things that impressed me is he mentioned the fact that in the, cru in the cruisers, right, uh, now they, with, the, with their computer capability, right, they have the ability, if they're stopping somebody, they get information, they're going to be able to pull up a page. If, if you're in the, the registry, they're going to get your picture, right, 
so that the officer who may have stopped you, and you know, these, these are officers, you know, and they're, they're, they're worried, they're trying to figure out what happened. You know, they stopped you because there was a problem. And so you got an officer who, who may be, you know, the usual assumption is, was the person drinking, is the person on drugs, right? But if, if you're in the registry, you know, then the officer immediately can get it, right? He can say, oh, this is so-and-so, you know, and they've got some problems, you know? And, and so they're going to be interpreting the actions of the person in a very different way. And also that registry, is th th that screen is going to have a contact person. A contact person. So if there's, if there's an issue, there's somebody they're going to be able to call, right? So it's, it's a classic case, you know, really getting community, really getting a sense in, that you're safe in this community, that you're safe in this community when you have dementia. I just wanted to mention that. Trish? Uh, I'll, let me do Yep. So. As part of this wonderful process, we ended up in our action team having this wonderful woman named Ellen Santos uh, from the Asabeth School who, who was interested in helping us do the, the outreach and doing the questionnaires and all of this stuff. And then the one of the first meetings, we, we came back and people had done their questionnaires and were asking, so did anybody get any questionnaires done? Oh, I had two, I had thir three. Ellen Santos, oh, I had 30. I got 30 done. You had 30, right? Well, well they, they decided not only to, to, to interview a clusters of students in the school, but also to do a whole bunch of other things regarding making the school, Asabet School, a dementia-friendly school. An amazing thing that, that I know Alice Bonner has, has talked now to other folks about around the state in terms of having our, these, these schools doing these kinds of programs. It's terrific. I see a lot of people with uniforms today, so I think that may be about it. But I wanted to introduce Ellen Santos and Kathy Fadul, both from ASCBA, to talk about that program and, and what they did and what they did. Thank you. Uh, I had originally become involved with the Senior Center because we had done a project last year, and then I heard about this. At ASABET, we're always uh, interested in partnering with the community. Uh, we're putting 40, over 40 nurses a year out to the community. So we really were excited about an opportunity to get involved in this. Uh, so I talked to, you know, talked to my students, I went back, talked to the superintendent, and I thought a lot about how we could do things to the greatest, the greatest benefit. Then I started thinking about we not only have practical nurse students who are post-secondary uh, post students in the building, but we also have a health technology department where the students are learning a variety of things that I'll let Kathy talk about. So when I talked to Kathy, she was excited about partnering with me, so we're doing this together. So what, when we started thinking about what could we do, we have this pocket of expertise with the practical nurse students and the health tech students, and then we have this entire school of tradespeople. So we know that our Epicurean room, which is fantastic, stop by, um, we know that many, many senior citizens visit the Epicurean room during the day. We know that many senior citizens come into our cosmetology department to get their hair done. And then when we thought more about it, we said, well, we're also training all the tradespeople. We're training carpenters, plumbers, electricians who are going out into people's homes. We're training the people who work on cars, who might be the first ones to discover someone drove in here today that maybe shouldn't be driving. So we decided between us that we would take on the task of educating our school to be dementia friendly. Hi. So we have um, three main goals for our school. Um, the first one is just to increase awareness and understanding of dementia. Many of our students have family members who have dementia and they have a lot of questions. They don't really n understand it. They've lived with this and it comes on very slowly. So we want people to understand what dementia is, some of the dementia related diseases. We also want to reduce stigma because just like other people have said here today, it's people don't know what to say to someone who has dementia or a family member who is caring for someone with dementia. And we want to just reduce stigma that these are people who are just trying to get through the day like everybody else. And the third thing we want to do is provide really concrete strategies for our students when they go out to the community, when they're dealing with family members, when they're dealing with um, people that they come in contact with in their jobs. So I think we're going to be able to accomplish those goals through a variety of means. 
For people don't, that don't know about Assabet, Assabet's located here in Marlboro, but we do serve 14 towns. We have almost 1,100 students, undergraduate students, and then we also have a thriving post-secondary, including the LPN, and there's other things there too, the after dark, and there's a lot going on at Assabet. It's really a, a vibrant community. Um, we're undergoing some renovations in our, um, our stadiums and our our athletic fields and we just had a huge renovation for our school. It's a great resource for the community. And we are going to have the practical nursing students work with the health technology students. And I'll let Ellen talk a little bit about that. So both, both the groups have been trained and uh, I had a uh, I think I'll bring Jess up now. I had a, I had a group come in over vacation and uh, work on some, str some strategies that we want to present in the shop. So what our plan is, is to partner some of our practical nurse students who are here today. These are some of my volunteers, but I had 30 come in last week. And <laughs> I'm very proud of them. And we're going to have them partner with Kathy's high school students and go into the shops. And what they were, their task was to come up with strategies. What are things that people can do when they are faced with someone who may have dementia. So I'm going to ask Jessica to come up. She's going to be the spokesperson for the group today and just tell you a little bit about what they did last week to prepare. So we're getting underway. We haven't started our training yet. Hi everyone, I'm Jessica. I'm one of the PN students that volunteered to be part of the project. So like Mrs. Santos said, we volunteered our time on our vacation on Wednesday. About 30 of us came and we talked about the project. Last year's PN students were involved in the surveys. Our job this year was how can we teach high school students to be dementia friendly. So like she said, the school has a lot of things to offer dementia and we decided to come up with strategies, but it wasn't all an easy task to teach high school students who may or may not know anything about dementia, how to handle it, how to make them feel safe, and how to make it a productive community. So we came up with skits, and yes, we all had to perform these skits, and we did a lot of revisions and came up with some good ideas that we're gonna build on. Um, one of the big ideas we came up with is high school students don't always have the biggest attention span and cannot maybe remember a lot of things we might teach them. So we came up with an acronym and we called it, Are You ABLE? ABLE is the acronym. Um, a stands for attitude, attitude and how you're dealing with a dementia patient and how to handle a situation. B is for be patient, the need to be really patient with a dementia person and not to make them feel unwelcome. L was for limit distractions. One of the things we know about dementia people, they cannot handle a lot going on at the same time. So we want to teach them how to be able to make them feel comfortable and maybe diffuse a situation that might happen. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a cold. <laughs> and then, um, I don't remember what E was for. What was E for? Yeah, it was, yeah, it had to do with education too. <laughs> I have a cold, so my brain's not working well. However, this was you know, something that we're gonna build on, and we're hoping to be able to teach the high school students and you know, make it a fun thing for them to learn about so that they remember it. And then they'll be able to go out in the community, maybe deal with their family better, and it'll make the school a safe place for people with dementia to go to. So as Ellen mentioned, there's four area of, uh, areas that we're going to be emphasizing. One is the Epicurean restaurant, um, where, you know, three days a week, they welcome the community, and it's, uh, it's a great place um, for people to go. It's small. It's a, a, it's a great place. Uh, the Sheer Techniques Hair Salon is also located at Acibit with our cosmetology students, and we do have um, a clientele that comes in regularly. And then all the people that are going to be going into the community, as Ellen said, the plumbers, the electricians, the carpenters, and then also the people that are going to be working, the people, people are going to be coming to them. Um, people that are in drafting or business tech or office workers where someone's going to be coming in and they need to know what to do if someone comes in who seems a little bit off. 
The curriculum that we're going to be going over, all of our students, uh, the, LP, the PN students and all of my high school health technology students are trained in um, habilitation training, which is a curriculum that is set up through the Alzheimer's Association. Our teachers are all have to go and attend um, professional development to learn this. We then train our students. It's over 12 hours of training that they receive, and they also have a lot of practical hands-on training. So they really under, get a good understanding of what it's like for someone who has dementia. Because it's not just not, for, not remembering things. It's more than that. It's visual changes. It's the distractions, as Jessica mentioned. It is, there's a whole host of things that you need to be aware of. And we need to be able to make it an environment that's comfortable for them, that they feel safe in. And safety is a huge thing. Because just imagine that you are in a place and you don't remember, you don't remember the people that you're talking to. You don't know if you know them or not. You don't know, even remember where you are. Are you supposed to be here or what are you doing here? You, it's very, uns the people feel very scared, alone, frustrated. And we want to make them feel welcome and comfort and we use really concrete strategies of how we approach people, how we set up a room, uh, the things that we do to make their environment feel better for them. We also talk about that dementia is a brain disease. A lot of people feel like people are asking the same questions five times because they're trying to manipulate you or they're trying to get something from you. But every time they ask that question, for them, it's the first time that they're asking that question. They don't remember asking it. They don't remember the answer that you just gave them. They're not trying to manipulate you. So there are some things that people need to understand, our students need to understand in the high school so that when they go out, they're not going to say, oh, what's this guy doing? He's already asked me that. Why is he following me around like this? And have some good strategies that they can use so that, that the person with dementia feels safe, accepted, and the person who's working with them is having a good experience with them too. Um, the other things we're going to talk about are ways that we can work to prevent dementia in ourselves if it's possible. A healthy heart is a healthy brain. We're going to talk about healthy living. We're going to talk about other dementia related disease. Even though Alzheimer's is the number one disease that has dementia um, as, a di as a symptom, there are other ones. And we're going to talk about very shop specific strategies such as in the Epicurean restaurant, exactly what um, Arthur was talking about at Kennedy's. We see this all the time happening. My daughter's a waitress and she has um, people who come in with dementia. She just cuts the meal in half in the kitchen, boxes up half of it and presents just half the meal so they're not overwhelmed. Same thing with the ginger ale. They, oh, you're going to have your special drink? Yep, but it's just ginger ale. So these strategies are happening all the time. And People just aren't aware of it, that they're going on. We want to make everybody aware that these strategies are helpful, um, and it's going to make a better experience for everybody. That's it, Arthur? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I think, you know, it's, it's really exciting that we can contribute in this way. One of the first things that my students did was to do some research, and, and we loved the new, the new website. It was, it was really helpful. But when we did the research, we didn't see anything about schools. And when you think about the future, how are we going to touch the future of this community? If we can continue our project at Assabet and give it, it's just one more thing that our students are going to graduate with uh, a background. It, it, is, it is really just such an ideal place to, to learn the techniques, to get the awareness, because we are going out there. Um, technical schools are ideally suited for this project. I met with the PN educators of the state last week, and uh, I told them what I was doing, and I told them that I would help them if any of them wanted to start it in their communities. Because anybody who's been online and you've done a, a search, you do see that you started in Minnesota, but this is a big movement. And I think technical schools are uniquely suited to really make a difference. So we're excited about it. I'm really glad that Kathy joined me, and our students are always make us proud. Thank you.
Well, I have to say that I want to be able, I hope you want to be able, and we're certainly going to take your acronym and, and run with it, because we think, I think that that's just great. What a wonderful way to explain to people how to become dementia friendly. Good job. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to ACIBIT. We cannot thank you enough for jumping on board, and we are so proud that we're going to have the first dementia friendly school in our community. So thank you. So it just goes to show you how this movement is, is moving so quickly and people are jumping on board because there is a true need out there. Um, starting with our students and educating and bringing it through. We're all, most of us in this room, we're a little bit late to the game. But I have faith that we can all catch up and, um, and emulate what they're doing over at ACIBIT because that's what our community needs and that's where we need to move forward with.